G'day guys, welcome back. I drew myself a little pyramid so I remember to look at the pyramid when I'm pouring my little puddles of paint for the bloom. Most paint on the bottom puddle and then as you get up to the top to the cell activator it's the least paint so it makes a little pyramid so that's for me to remember. Now I need some more teal. The last one, the last painting I did um, paints grey, sand, uh, a navy, a silver and a white but this time I'm going to change the navy up for some teal but I need some more so I thought I'll just show you how I make it. I know it's upside down and you can't really see what I'm doing here but I'll tell you. So what I need to do is get some of my Lochine interior wall paint untinted and I need to put 30 grams of that. I'm going to get a stir stick. 30 grams in my cup. 30 grams is one ounce. Twenty-seven, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay, so that's the thirty grams. I'll remember to bang the top on that in a minute. Now four, and then zero it again. For my teal, I use 50-50 of the phthalo green <coughs> and the phthalo blue. That's a semi-transparent. You can see the little circle there is half coloured in. And that's a transparent. It's not coloured in. So 50-50. <coughs> but before that, I need to add I need to add 10 grams of Jasonia's gloss varnish. So it's a three to one. Three parts of the untinted house paint, one part gloss varnish. You can use polycrylic if you don't have this. So 10 grams. This is thinning it out. So this is acting like water. Don't add water. If you need to thin it out, use more of this or more polycrylic. So give that a stir. So that is now your pouring medium. Okie dokes. Now the Joe Sonia's paints are pretty thin paints. So it'll thin them out <clears throat> a little bit more. So now we've got 40 grams in here, 30 grams of the house paint, 10 grams of the Joe Sonia's, that's 40. So it's two to one with your pouring medium to paint. Two parts pouring medium, one part paint. So that's 40. So now we need 20 of paint. And just luckily enough, We've got two paints, so it's 10 of each, hey? 10 grams of each. If you're in the States and you don't really know about grams, you can put your scale on grams. Like this scale has got ounces, grams, mils, pounds. So you can just change the setting and get grams, as long as that scale allows you to do that. So that's 10 of the green. Now I'm gonna go 10 of the blue. Woo! See how liquidy it is? Sometimes if your paints are too thin, you might actually have to thicken them up by putting some more of that in to thicken it up because these are quite liquidy paints. All right, so that's our paint now. Two parts pouring medium, one part paint. Look at that gorgeous teal color. I'll come up in a minute and show you the consistency. It leaves a mound. You don't want it too thick because then when you blow the white across, it doesn't really go because the paint underneath is too thick, so it doesn't move. The paint doesn't move. All right, let's bring that back. I'll put that off to the side so I'll remember to do that. Now I'll just show you the consistency of this paint. If it's really thick, focus, if it's really thick, add more polycrylic or more Josonias, but just don't put water in it. Okay, can you see that? It leaves a mound. Hopefully it's showing up. Okay, that's it there. Right now, I need to focus again because this is what I did last time. 
and I wasn't focused, was I? No. All right. So then when I've got my paint mixed up, I just pour it into my little bottles. And it's as easy as that. These are two ounce bottles, I think. So they hold 60 grams, two ounces. So what I've made here is perfect. I won't scrape all that out now. I'll do it later. But it's like liquid gold, so we won't waste it. Put the little lid on. Put my gloves on. This is such a messy technique. We need our gloves on. And we shall get going. Pillow paint. It's just low sheen interior wall paint. Put a big blob of that on. What's that? That's right, there was something in it last time, wasn't there? I think, you know, when you're pouring it out of the can, it probably gets a little bit crusty on the outsides. That's right, oh, that's on the edge there. It'll get tipped off. Okay, nice big pillow of paint. If you want to, you can just sort of do that to cover the edges just so that they're wet and it makes the paint slide a bit easier. I've got my little cake round spinny thing underneath so I can do this easily. We shouldn't be using my fingers though. Wait, get back in the middle there. Where do you think you're going? I haven't done with you yet. So there we go, we are ready. Let's put a little extra blob in the middle just to pillow it, so to speak. Right, let's get on with this. So this is my navy. Oh, and I just dropped a little crusty bit in. It gets crusty around the outside. Okay, my navy. Decent amount for your bottom of your pyramid. Oh, and don't stick your bottle in it. Silly woman. All right. So most on the bottom. And then we've got our flesh color with a little bit of gold mixed into it. It's our middle one. Feels a little bit on the thicker side to the blue. The metallics seem to be thicker. And now the teal that we just made up. Like so. Less of the silver, the one that goes directly under the pillow paint needs to be a little bit less. Otherwise it takes over. I did thin out my silver from the last, oh, I should use my nozzle, see that's too much. Too much, what if I can, I probably can't take it off, can I? <laughs> oh gosh. All right, and I'm going to use my nozzle. Oh, actually, let's go with the thinner one that I made up last time, hey? This is probably a four to one, four parts flow troll, one part paint. I did make it a little bit thinner with the last video. Okay, so no, not too much, hey? There we go. I know you're yelling at me, not too much. All right, let's see how that goes with not too much. Hopefully I've done my little pyramid there right. Put it back in the middle. And I'm going to use my hairdryer with my little medicine cups, upside down medicine cups with the bottom cut out. Because that worked really well. Here we go. Try and get straight down to blow that right out. Don't get too close. got a little bit of white area there which I don't think is too bad I think once we start stretching it some lacing will come out so that's pretty isn't it <clears throat> can't really see the gold at the moment so 
So I still don't know whether or not I'm doing a better job with the hair dryer or whether I should just go back to my little fan blower. With the fan blower, I have more control and I blow small sections out. I don't get such intricate, tiny lacing though. I get a bigger lacing. <clears throat> so I get more of this sort of a finish. And because this is that card, so you can just kind of push it back, bend it if it starts warping a little bit, straighten it out. So that's what I can get with the bigger one. Um, with the hair dryer, I get this much smaller lacing. See that? This is still a little bit damp underneath, but that's the effect I get, much smaller lacing. So, yeah. So I'm just sort of waiting for this to do its thing. I probably did blow too much into the middle because I can see it's dipped there. This is why you need quite a thick pillow in the middle because when you hit it with that air, it blows it out and it makes a dip. So again, practice, practice, practice with your blow. You don't have to use a blower or a hairdryer or a straw. You can just use your mouth if you want to. I can't. <laughs> It doesn't work for me. So this is gorgeous here. I'll probably get a little bit of that off because there's no lacing there because I didn't blow the white over there. Let's go. I was hoping that the middle would move, but it's not. See how everything's moving except the middle? That's because the hair dryer has, it's quite forceful, so it's gone straight down and it's almost probably touching the, um, the canvas. So that's the only problem with having so much air. But look, it's it's catching up. It's actually, yeah, maybe it'll work after all. The paint's kind of pushing over the other paint. So it might work still. Loosen it all up. Look at that, it's working. Woohoo! I haven't got that big blob of white in the middle like I did last time. Did you see the last one? Do you know what I'm talking about? Right now, this is where we can move paint and decide which lacing we want to keep. I want to go over my corners. I'll leave a little bit of the navy there, though. I don't mind that. I just don't want the white on the corners for this particular pull. Oh, look at the lacing, you guys. I obviously did much better with my blow this time. Right, back to the middle and then just sort of touch the edge. It's a bit tricky. Now people are saying to me, why are you using tiles or why are you using little canvas boards? You know, can't you use a canvas? And I'll say, well, yeah, you can use a canvas, but until you have mastered this technique, there's really no point wasting a canvas, a big canvas, wasting all the paint because this stuff is expensive. The house paint's expensive. The gloss varnish is expensive. Well, it is in Australia anyway. The paints are expensive, about $18 a bottle. So, you know, feel free to, to go for a big canvas. But if you are if you haven't practiced, you're not experienced in it, you may be um, unhappy with the result and then you've wasted a lot and lot of supplies. So that's my answer. Practicing on little ones. The tiles are cheap. Um, you can easily wash them off if you want to pour over the top again and go again. Now I'd rather keep this here and get rid of some of that. So I just need to get that stripey off the bottom. Okay. Don't mind keeping that little bit of navy like I did with the top. It's a bit tricky to hold. My um. My gold's kind of vanishing, but the tan colour is a um, opaque colour. So when you're doing this technique, you are best off not using opaques. It's because the opaques are very heavy, sort of a dense paint and it wants to sink. So the gold's kind of 
vanished. You can see little bits of it underneath, but basically it's sunk. Um, maybe I need to put that the opaques like on top so that they can sink. That's really pretty, isn't it? Do you like that one? And I know there's not much happening over here in the way of lacing, but it's not ugly. Like it's still quite pretty, I think. It's just it's just silver over there <clears throat> you know if you're the sort of person that wants to do close-ups maybe and then enlarge well certainly the top three quarters would be perfect for that wouldn't it um, now where can I put this um, let me just get a, a cooling rack just one sec <clears throat> I don't want to put it down in my mess that's all so I'll put that there and then I can put that there. All right, I'm going to go and get the camera. Take you down for a close-up because that's so pretty. Is it pretty? Do you like it? I'll show you the one before. The one that had the, the bigger white centre. So that didn't have the teal in it. That had the uh, Payne's Grey and the Navy and the... Still, again, the, the beige kind of colours sunk and you've lost it all, but again, it's an opaque, so we shouldn't really use opaques. Not really. Oops, why is that doing that? It's obviously got a bump in the middle. Touch the side. All right, I'm just going to put that one there. And I'm going to grab the camera. Take you down for a close-up. Let's zoom you in first. So what are you thinking? Do you like the effect with the hairdryer that I'm getting with the smaller lacing? I did put up two photos on um, the Shelly Out Facebook group. And I was actually surprised. Most people said they liked the bigger lacing, which I, yeah, I was surprised. I would have thought that everyone would have liked the smaller lacing. Now, this one to me, it's just, you know, it's too white. So with this one, I went and added less white. Did my little pyramid thingy. With I, I did most of the color on the bottom and then least on top. So I think sort of there, <laughs> that sort of three quarters of it or two thirds of it is just stunning. Really, really pretty. So um, yeah, there you go. I hope you've learnt something today with these two videos. How much paint to use. So I'm quite surprised actually. Um, I, as I said, I made my paints a little bit thicker. With my other ones, I was using um, more of the gloss varnish and polycrylic. And um, <clears throat> my white was sinking a lot. So then I thought, oh, what if I thicken my paints? And then I can even thin out my my white, my cell activator, and it should just sit on top because the underneath paints are much thicker, so it's kind of holding the white in place. So that's what I did, and I think it's worked. What do you think? I think it's worked. Just don't put too much white on and end up like that. All right, shut up, woman. You're just gabbling on too much now. Right, let's go. Or oh, we'll see you later. I'm going to mix up some more paints. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I might do a wing pour. Have a break from the blooms. But I do want to practice with my hair dryer. All right, see, I'm doing it again. I'm just gabbling on. All right, enough. Shut up, woman. All right, I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.